Hello everyone, I'm so pleased to be here with you. I've spent the majority of my career focused on the social determinants of health across many different parts of the healthcare industry, government and academia. Now, you may be thinking, that's great Garth, but what does YouTube have to do with health? And how is a video site supposed to deliver better care to patients? It connects to, directly back to the determinants of health and the things that drive health outcomes. There are reams of literature looking at the impacts of housing policy, food insecurity, and racial equity on health outcomes. But there's another area that we need to start focusing on, and that is information as a determinant of health. As anyone who's worked in public health knows, empowering communities with education is essential to helping people live healthier lives. This has been brought into even clearer view over the past two years as the world has battled a misinformation epidemic alongside the COVID pandemic. We need to consider where and how people access information about their health, the quality of that health information, how easy it is to understand and how engaging it is. Listen, the reality is the majority of healthcare decisions are made outside the doctor's office in the everyday life of our patients. As physicians, we only have limited opportunities to connect with people within that exam room. And how can we better show up at many more points within a patient's day, bringing health information into their lives through the spaces they already visit? YouTube is already a part of a patient's journey. When they turn to us for answers to their health questions or look for a community who understands what they're experiencing or find helpful, helpful videos to explain complicated medical information more easily, Health education can come in many forms, and we've just seen firsthand how powerful video can be used as a medium to reach people with health messages. That's why the mission for YouTube Health is to provide equitable access to highly authoritative health information that is evidence-based and culturally relevant, as well as engaging. This approach also further reinforces our ongoing efforts to tackle the very serious issue of medical misinformation. We want to make sure that people are finding information from evidence-based authoritative sources and that information is easy to understand and connects with them in a personal, engaging way. We're doing this with a focus on two key areas, information quality and information equity. First, let's talk about quality. In the past year, we've launched new features, kicked off new partnerships, and worked with experts in the field to help build foundations upon which we can greatly scale our work in health in 2022. We continue to expand our work with leading health organizations like Mass General Brigham and public health leaders like the American Public Health Association, as well as with clinicians and creators. Our goal is to further increase the accessibility of high quality health content on our platform. Listen. These organizations are creating engaging evidence-based videos that really connect with people. In addition to increasing the volume of highly authoritative content in YouTube, we're working to increase the way people find it and raise up its discoverability to ensure people can find these sources easily when they come to YouTube. To do that, we've added health source information panels on videos to provide context to help viewers identify videos from authoritative sources. And we've also introduced health content shelves that highlight videos from these sources when you search for specific important health topics on YouTube. These context cues aim to help people more easily navigate and evaluate credible health information. Starting just this week, users in Brazil, India, and Japan will also see these new features while searching on YouTube for top health conditions. As part of this effort, we've partnered with the World Health Organization and the National Academy of Medicine on principles for evaluating authoritative health sources. We've also worked closely with regional health authorities while doing this. We're excited these features are rolling out to more people and plan to reach additional communities across the globe later this year. The second key I mentioned that we're focused on is information equity. If we all agree information is a determinant of health, meaning that it drives healthcare decisions, and we must consider how that information gets to people. Health leaders have a responsibility to keep pace with the changes in where and how people find information. We must meet people where they are and connect with them in ways that are not only scientifically accurate, but also culturally relevant and engaging. Through video, we can provide free and equitable access to the best and brightest thinking in science and medicine, and we can make it engaging, interesting, and compelling to watch. We can become part of people's lives and reach them in the moments that matter. 
more and more leaders are taking up that challenge. I'd like to share a couple of examples with you guys. The first is the New England Journal of Medicine. As many of you already know, the New England Journal of Medicine is not only recognized for publishing practice-changing medical research, but it's also become a cornerstone in providing equitable access to information for many years by allowing online access to readers in the world's least developed countries. New England Journal of Medicine has just taken a new step forward in providing access to the best minds in medicine by launching a new channel on YouTube. They're creating short summaries of key findings from their latest articles, along with interviews and animations to provide the best and newest medical research from the journal and make it available at no additional cost to audiences around the world. YouTube Health also has experts making the most of digital video to support public health education efforts. The American Academy of Pediatrics has used YouTube creatively to reach younger audience. In one particular project, they created short form videos called YouTube Shorts to connect with young women, girls, and gender expansive people about key topics related to their health, such as menstruation and consent. The AP has launched a video series to empower parents with the information they need to make decisions about their child's immunizations. The videos cover a commonly asked question, but also address how disinformation and misinformation about vaccines can spread online and help parents know how to find accurate information. Lastly, the American College of Physicians has also tackled vaccine misinformation, but from the perspective of the physician. Their Physician to Physician Conversation series teaches doctors the effective communication strategies to build vaccine confidence and address patient concerns that are rooted in misinformation. All of these are great examples of how medical experts are reimagining how and where health information is shared to increase access to information for everyone. It's really an exciting time to be working in health communication. We have more tools available to help people than ever before. The scale and reach of platforms like YouTube can radically increase equity of access to high quality health information by breaking down barriers between the ivory towers of academia and the everyday people who want to understand how to take better care of themselves and their families. There's always more work to be done and we hope to make a difference through our focus on information quality and equity.